Dudes, what's crack lacking? So today, um, I've been shopping on YouTube, essentially, right? Don't we all shop on YouTube a little bit? Yeah, so that's where I do all my research to buy stuff. So uh, I've been a, a pretty steady YouTuber since about 2009-ish, when a bunch of content started showing up. Anyways, I ramble on. I digress. Uh, there was this one particular thing that came out and I believe it was 2009 and it was this Epiphone Valve Junior. It's a five watt, all tube amp, single volume knob. Here's a picture of it. And that thing just looked awesome. And I was like, I need one of those. I'm not sure what I'm going to use it for, but I need one. And then months passed and then years passed and I never got one. Well, long story short, come a few weeks ago, I bought one for $135 or whatever it was. Plus they had to ship it to me. So it was like 30 bucks shipping. So it was like 165, 170 bucks, which, okay. That's quite a bit of money for something that may or may not sound good. Um, but it's me and I'm a tinkerer, so I went on the Frommel website. Frommel is an electronics modification uh, company, and they had a mod for the Valve Junior, the Epiphone Valve Junior. And so I was like, it's me, let's tinker, let's do our thing. Let's see if we can get this thing to sound good. So here we go, wish me luck. This may totally suck and it may be completely wasting 200 something dollars. We're gonna find out. And really, uh, I'll let you guys decide. I'll, I'll have my own opinions on it, but uh, ultimately it comes down to you guys and uh, if this would be something you guys would wanna tackle. Um, there's still a few of these amps out there, you know, they only made them for a couple of years, I think. And they're kind of aiming for, I think that Gibson G, what is it, GA5 Skylark old amp from the 50s i think it's kind of doing that vibe and so a cool little five watt head you know I, if you can get it to sound good with a single volume knob that may be the secret weapon for recording so that's my intended purpose of it let's see if we can get something that actually gets us there This isn't how it arrived, but I needed to take it all apart and just see exactly what I was getting into. But, uh, you know, I'm, 
what do you expect for 130 bucks? It's a pretty decently made, you know, little head. You know, this is all metal. This is nice uh, plywood. And, you know, the construction of it's really well done, actually, for something that was so inexpensive back in the day. I think these things were going for a little over a hundred bucks each uh, when they were new. So maybe, maybe they were like 170, something like that new. So uh, a couple of things I've noticed just getting into it. Um, probably not going to come through on this. Ooh, you see that? And I don't, I don't even, you can't even see the sticker. It's so faded. But there's about all you need to see. This thing's cooking valves. Uh, it's just, it's uh, biased way too hot. So I know one of the Frommel fixes is to cool down the bias of the amp on the power tube. Another one of the fixes is to, here's a cheap Chinese tube that came in this thing. Uh, we will be replacing that with some nice JJs. The... Uh, EL30, the, I'm sorry, the EL84 was a JJ. It's just fried. Um, so the other one uh, will be replacing the, the making the, uh, I'm sorry, the biasing on the preamp tube, it'll bias it much hotter. So cooler on the power tube, hotter on the preamp tube, give us a, a better, warmer tone uh, in theory, right? Everything's here in theory. And you can see this is where the power tubes was. And it, you can see the board's a little cooked from over bias, just biased way too hot. So we'll look at fixing that. If we take a look at the amp itself in, in the uh, wiring, let's see if I can get it to sit up here. Here's what we got. You know, it's all nicely done on these individual boards. And uh, I watched some of the YouTube videos. I saw some from the guitarologist. Anyways, I like that guy's video. I, I like that guy's uh, approach to fixing amps. He's kind of an amp guru. You should go check out some of his stuff. He's pretty awesome. And then I've watched just a boatload of Psionic Audio's videos. That guy is an amp wizard. And you should definitely go check out his stuff. If you like any of this sort of nonsense that I'm about to do to this thing. But one of the things he did that I really liked was, so we have all these extra power, uh, I think it's all these. Yeah, see all these? These are unused different voltages uh, for the amplifier that I think is adding a bunch of extra noise in the amp. And when I give you a sound test, you guys will hear that that's just unnecessary. So I'm gonna to try to clean up a lot of the wiring. And then obviously there's several modifications that I'll get into with the board. And we'll see if we can turn this thing into a little five watt demon, like it states in the Frommel uh, modification package. Okay, so I needed a little help on this, especially these ones. My colorblind ass can't see this stuff very well. That's the yellow, red. This is, you know, red, purple. I think that's brown to green, something like that, or black to green. And then these were brown, black, black, brown, brown. So just like the little picture here states on their uh, website to help me through this uh, instruction. All right, so I popped off all the leads now, and I just have this one connected ground wire that I got to desolder right there. Looks like someone redid the ground. I can't tell, but just take out that one, then I should have the board off. Oh, in case any of you were curious, I used this resistor to discharge the main capacitor. It's checking under 10 volts. So, amp safety first. All right. 
first one. This thing heated up here. I had to get my iron a little hotter, but I don't want to overheat the board. So I actually think the temp's good. There's a lot on here. There it goes. All right. Load up this bad boy. All right. Voila. One undone. Like 12 more to go. Okay, so the first two resistors we're replacing are here. I think they're aptly named R1 and R2. And we're replacing with this yellow and this red resistor. So this one's a one meg. This one's a 10K. So let's uh, get these desoldered. Yeah, I don't know the best way to get these out. I think it's probably to cut these out first. I have to get a little more flow. All right, yay, first two resistors out. Please leave all your comments in the section below about how horrible of a solder I am. Uh, it's a work in progress, guys. All right, first one in. Yay. So I got like nine more of these to do. I don't know that I wanna bore you with every single one, but I'll just show little highlights of me doing each one at this point. Speed up this process. So there's the first two, nine more to go. Okay, putting in the first two resistors in C1 and C2 here. Oops, don't do that. So one goes here, the other one goes right there. I just desoldered the other ones, so we're ready to rock and roll putting in the new ones. Okay, we're up to resistor. I just pulled out R8 and R9, clean them up. And it's these little guys. What you gotta put in here? here? The other ones are much bigger than these. Not that that matters. Soldering in my final capacitor here, this one here, this 100 uh, UF 400 volt capacitor on the end here. So. Got it crimped in here, got it cleaned up. Um, yeah, I gotta say it wasn't overly difficult. Just take your time. Don't be in any hurry to get this done. So for my first time through it, I, I've noticed that uh, I just don't wanna rush anything and I don't wanna, uh, you know, fry the board. Make sure your soldering iron is not too hot. So we replaced R1 and R2 and C1 and C2 and R8 and R9 and C4 here. And I don't remember what this one is. 
R14. This is R14 based on the schematic here that I'm looking at. We also replace C5, which is next to this, right there. Uh, this was super tricky. This little capacitor in here, you're just jumpering those two pins on the back end of this thing. You could have jumpered them there, I guess, too. I tried that. That was really tricky to get in. That was not easy. So I hope that turned out okay. That was by far the most tricky thing. Um, so C5 and then C6 here was replaced. And I, voila, there it is. There's the mods, there's the back of the board if you guys wanna see the job I did. You know, I tried to do the best I could. There's, you know, you gotta be careful with these capacitors in here, these little ones like this, where you don't want to make sure these leads don't touch over here as well. So those two are kind of critical to make sure the positive and negative are clearly distinguished. And you can see the charring of the board. I'm hoping that uh, happens uh, no more. You know, now that we've rebiased it. So I got a lot of dressing to do to the wiring. There she is. There's all the broken bad pieces. All right, here it is guys. I dressed all the wiring, got it all wired back up. All the new components in there, all nice and snug. It's time to fire this bad boy up. Hopefully it doesn't smoke. So I was just about to put the <clears throat> back panel on, but I wanted to show this. Um, so these were the two extra voltages from the transformer. And I think this was a ground wire or something. I don't know exactly what it was, but it was attached to these two voltage um, that are not US voltage. So there's really no reason to have it in the amp. It's not like I'm gonna be taking this cross country to some strange voltages. It's pretty much set up for 115 volts, uh, US voltage out the uh, AC current out, out the wall. So these are redundant and will just create noise in the amp. So I have cut them all back. I'm hoping it reduces some additional noise. We shall see. Okay, moment of truth time. Super power's on without exploding. I don't hear any crazy sounds.
guys let me know what you think. Um, man, it is a fuzz monster now. Uh, when I had that thing dimed, just felt like the whole thing was just collapsing on itself, but it was, it was almost too much for the amp to handle. So I think my favorite setting is right around noon. Very fuzzy, not super compressed like it is pushed all the way. And uh, yeah, man. <laughs> It's a bunch of nonsense. Sorry, guys. Not the most inspired playing in all these little clips. It's hard to left brain and right brain at the same time when you're making these videos. Um, not really thinking about music when I'm wiring amplifiers, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. I, I dig it. I dig the natural fuzzy tone. It's, it's vastly improved from the original sound and, and the really bad Chinese preamp tube that was in there it was super microphonic but uh frommel you guys figured it out it's an awesome little five watt amp so for a couple hundred bucks you got a little fuzz fire breathing dragon mm -hmm. all right guys please like subscribe uh love one another and i will see you guys on the next episode take care see ya <laughs>